Revised Penal Code, Book 2. Crimes Against National Security Distinguish espionage from treason. Espionage and treason are both crimes not conditioned by the citizenship of the offender. Espionage is committed both in time of war and peace while treason is committed only in time of war. Espionage is committed in many ways. While treason is committed in two ways, levying war, and adhering to the enemy, giving him aid or comfort. Distinguish piracy from mutiny. Piracy and mutiny may be committed either in Philippine waters or on the high seas. In piracy the person who attack a vessel or seize its cargo are strangers to the vessels. However, piracy under PD 532 can be committed by member of the crew and passengers, while mutiny is committed by members of the crew or passengers. In piracy intent to gain is essential while in mutiny the offenders may only intend to ignore the ship's officers or they may be prompted by a desire to commit plunder. Distinguish piracy and robbery on high seas. In piracy the offender is an outsider while in robbery on high seas the offenders are members of the complement or passengers of the vessel. In both, there is intent to gain and the manner of committing the crime is the same. Difference of piracy under RPC and PD 532, anti-piracy and anti-highway robbery law of 1974. In piracy the offender is an outsider while in anti-piracy under PD 532 the offender is a crew or passenger. Both may be committed within Philippine waters. Crimes against the fundamental law of the state. What are the differences between illegal detention, unlawful arrest and arbitrary detention? In illegal detention and unlawful arrest the offender is either a public officer or private individual while arbitrary detention the offender is only a public officer. As to nature both illegal detention and unlawful arrest are crimes against personal liberty and security while arbitrary detention is a crime against fundamental law of the land. In illegal detention the purpose is to deprive the victim of his liberty while in unlawful arrest the purpose is to deliver the victim to the proper judicial authority while arbitrary detention is in pursuit of his authority or duty to arrest. A public officer shall be held liable for delay in the delivery of a detained person to the proper judicial authorities under Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code when he fails to deliver a person detained for some legal ground to the proper judicial authorities within the following periods, a 12 hours for light penalty, b 18 hours for correctional penalty, or c 36 hours for afflictive penalty or capital punishment. Crimes Against Public Order Distinguish treason from rebellion, coup d'état, and sedition. Treason is a crime against national security while rebellion, coup d'état, and sedition are crimes against public order. Treason is committed by levying war against the government, or adherents and giving aid or comfort to enemies. While rebellion is committed through public uprising, and taking up arms against the government. While coup d'état is an attack against authorities, military camp, networks or public utilities or other facilities for power. While sedition is committed by rising publicly and tumultuously by more than three men who are armed or provided with means of violence. The purpose of treason is to deliver the government to the enemy during war. While rebellion is removing territory, or body of armed forces, or depriving the chief executive or legislature. Coup d'état is committed the purpose of seizing or diminishing state power. While sedition is for violation of the public peace or at least such a course of measures as evidently engenders it. Crimes against public morals. What are the elements of grave scandal? A. That the offender performs an act or acts. B. Such act or acts be highly scandalous as offending against decency and good customs. C. That the highly scandalous conduct is not expressly falling within any other article of the revised penal code grave scandal is a crime of last resort because you only file a complaint for grave scandal when the said act is not punishable under any other article in the RPC. D. The act or act complained to be committed in a public place or within the public knowledge or view. 
If the highly scandalous act is committed in a public place the crime of grave scandal will immediately arise. The place being public, the law presumes that someone may have witnessed the commission of the highly scandalous act. However, if the highly scandalous act is committed in a private place, for the crime of grave scandal to arise, it is necessary that it must be witnessed by one or more persons to be said that it is within the public knowledge or public view. Crimes committed by public officers What is misfeasance, malfeasance and nonfeasance? Misfeasance is committed when a public officer performs an official act in a manner not in accordance with what the law provides. Malfeasance is committed when a public officer performs in his public office an act prohibited by law. Nonfeasance is committed when public officer knowingly, willfully refuses or refrains from doing an act which is his official duty to do. Differentiate direct from indirect bribery. Both in direct bribery and indirect bribery the public officer receives a gift. In direct bribery the act desired by the briber to be done by the public officer is in connection with the performance of the latter's official duties, while in indirect bribery the gifts are offered and received by reason of the office. In direct bribery mere promise of a gift is sufficient while in indirect bribery it is necessary that the public officer actually receives the gifts offered to him by reason of his office. In direct bribery there is an agreement between the officer and the giver. While in indirect bribery usually, no agreement exists. Lastly, in direct bribery the offender agrees to perform an act or refrain from doing something because of the gift or promise. While in indirect bribery it is not necessary that the officer should do any particular act or even promise to do an act, as it is enough that he accepts gifts offered to him by reason of his office. Distinguish malversation from technical malversation. In malversation, funds or property usually public while in technical malversation, funds or property are always public. In malversation the offender is usually a public officer who is accountable for the public funds or property while in technical malversation offender is always a public officer to whom such public funds or property is under his administration. In malversation crime is committed by appropriating, taking or misappropriating or consenting or through abandonment or negligence, permitting any other person to take the public the public funds or property while in technical malversation crime is committed by applying public funds or property, appropriated by a law or ordinance for specific use, to a public use other than for which such fund or property has been appropriated. Lastly. Malversation is a malum in se while technical malversation is malum prohibitum. Thanks for watching. Follow me on my other social media accounts at Miss underscore Nota Vini. Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever I post. Have you more questions regarding my law school experience or have any recommendations for my next videos? Leave a comment below. See you on the next one.